and it's consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, and let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And one of the reasons that this is my favorite scripture is because when I was in prison, it was the only thing. That- Hello, everybody. Welcome to this podcast. My name is Bailey. And I'm Trent. Welcome to Crucifying Addiction. Today, we have a special guest. What's going on, guys? Uh, this is Tony. Tell us a little bit about, up, about Tony? yourself, man. I am currently trying to get my plumbing license. So I uh, dig ditches and I play in poop. <laughs> Fun. Okay, so this podcast is called Crucifying Addiction. We don't have Tony here for no reason at all. <laughs> so Tony, uh go ahead and like tell us where it all started. The first thing I remember when I started doing any type of anything was 14. I was 14 years old and one of my best friends, older brother, used to sell weed. And he would have so much, man. We would go to his house and kick back and they would pull out huge bags of of just pounds of marijuana. And uh, my friend was like, you want to smoke? And I said, sure. So I started off smoking weed, which as you know, people say is a a gateway drug, but really I think the gateway drug for me was alcohol because from marijuana, it turned into alcohol. So around 15 and 16, I started drinking alcohol and then doing harder drugs. Been into gangs and dropped out of school. And, you know, before all that, I I felt like I was a pretty good kid. You know, not the best kid, but I was I was good. I had goals. I had dreams. You know, I had things that I wanted to do when I got older. I used to break dance when I was younger and it man it was just one of the best things that that I could ever do because I was so good. I was so good at it, man. I would go to competitions in Austin, Dallas, San Antonio, just all around Texas just to go dance and Yes sir. It's where it's at. It is. And man, it it was, it was just so amazing to me because I was so good at it. You know, growing up being a a, a short guy, you know, it's hard to get good at something. You know, not basketball, not football, it's too little, you know, stuff like that. But breakdancing and gymnastics, oh man, I was good. But that didn't last long because as I was saying earlier, you know, smoking weed to drinking, well, once I started drinking, it was just like game over. And, you know, they say alcoholism runs in the family. And I I guess I can say it's kind of true because my mother was an alcoholic. My father is an alcoholic. My grandparents were alcoholics. Pretty much everybody in my family. Did you call yourself an alcoholic as soon as you started drinking? No, because I didn't see that I had a problem. You know, it, it, back then it was just having a good time, you know, and my good time lasted every day. When did it run out? When I ran out of money. As I got older, I got more deeper into different kinds of addiction. You know, alcohol turned into cocaine. Cocaine turned into crack. Crack turned into, you know, methamphetamine. And from methamphetamine, it was just like I started losing everything, you know. And, and I, I started doing meth when I was like 20, I would say 19 or 20. And I didn't like it at first. You know, I was like, I, I didn't like it. You know, my my cousin invited me to a party and he was like, hey, um, I got some coke. I thought it was cocaine. So I'm like, heck yeah, man, I'm down for that. And find out it's meth, and I'm I'm staying up for three days straight, and I don't know what the <laughs> heck is going on. You know, uh, from my own personal experience, I never thought I'd get into stuff like that when I started drinking. So, like, what got you there from just smoking weed and drinking? So, one of my favorite cousins, um, I used to stay with him all the time, and he lived in the barrio, you know, and they were always drinking and doing other stuff, you know, and I would just go and, and just drink. Well, one night he asked me if I wanted to try a line of cocaine. And I was like, sure. And I did. And I liked it, you know. And, and once you like something and with your, uh, if you have an addictive mentality, when you like something, you want to do that all the time. So it, it turned into like, okay, I, I want this more and more. And the more and more I wanted it, the the deeper and deeper it got into addiction. I remember going to another friend's house who used to sell it and I didn't have any money 
and he was like, well, you know what? My, my little dog over there, he needs a flea bath. Go give him a flea bath and go clean up his poop in the backyard and I'll give you some. And I would go and do that. And that's not even the, the brink of the type of things that I would do just so I can get high. That's not saving up for an Xbox. <laughs> that's not saving up for Xbox or Dude. PlayStation 4. Dude. So you continue this use despite those consequences? I didn't care about the consequences anymore. The only thing I cared about was getting high. You know, I, I, I don't feel like there was real consequences at first because I was, you, you get into that state of mind to where you don't really see the consequences. You know they're there, but you don't see them. The only thing you see is what you want. You see wanting to get high. You see a way to make money so you can get high. You see stealing. You see things that you shouldn't do. So what would your reaction be when you were get in trouble for these types of things? I would try to stop and clean up a little bit. You know, the first time I ever got in trouble, I was 21 years old and I had been selling methamphetamine and I was making some good money and I had been up for like three or four days and I dropped some off and on my way to where I was staying at the cops had kicked in the door task force had already raided the house I was staying at didn't even know it and I just walked right into it man did you ever feel like you had a problem Deep down inside, yes. But to admit it, no, because I, I was prideful. I, I had too much pride to tell somebody that, you know, I was a dope fiend or that I, I was an alcoholic or that I was addicted. You know, it, it was more like I can stop when I want, knowing that I couldn't. Even after task force kicked the door down, who who was who was in the house? I think six people got arrested that day. Family? Uh, yes, I was staying with my cousin. And it's crazy because my cousin told the cops that I was the one that was doing everything at that house. So, <laughs> and, It's because you weren't there. <laughs> yeah, because I wasn't there. So when was the first time that you made the serious effort to stop whatever it was you thought you needed to stop? For me... I wanted to stop smoking meth, but it wasn't on the real checklist, like drinking and smoking weed wasn't, wasn't there yet. And so like, tell me about those failed efforts about stopping. Okay. So after I got in trouble with, uh, busted by the task force, I ended up getting out of jail and this girl had bonded me out with a hot check. So I went on the run and got busted again a month later, right after that, I got put on probation, 10 years probation. So I tried to stop my hardest, to stay clean, to stay sober, and to do the right thing. But I just liked getting high too much that it didn't last. And I would stop reporting, go on the run, and then they would catch me six months a year later. And then I would go to jail again, clean up, you know, while I'm in jail, nine, nine months, ten months a year get out, do the same thing. It was just an ongoing cycle of wanting to just get high. And I felt like I couldn't stop. I, I didn't even, after I got to that point, I don't ever feel like I had a, a goal or what I wanted to do in life or where I saw my life in 10 years. I, I never even seen that. I just saw me getting high and going to jail. When did you realize that like this was starting to become a problem and you tried stopping? Well, probably about the fifth time that I got locked up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I I ended up going to prison and I was in prison for two years. And while I was in prison, you know, well, hold on, let me back up for a minute. The day I, I was on the run from the cops and they show up at my dad's house and I go and I hide in the closet. And while I'm hiding in the closet, I'm praying to God, God, man, if you let me out of this, I I promise I'll follow you. 
So, you know, they, they were looking for me. They, and they couldn't find me for like almost an hour. And then they finally found me. And when they did, I kind of figured like, well, maybe that's not the answer I was going to get from God. When I went to prison, I ended up in jail with one of my best friends today. And he was my cellmate. And he was reading his Bible. He was doing Bible studies. And, you know, he would try to get me to go. And, you know, at first I was like, no, I, I don't want that right now. Or, or, you know, I'm not ready. But as soon as I did, just trust in God with my, my everything, things just started to happen. You know, I, while I was in jail, I, I didn't know where Jackie or my kids were. I didn't, I hadn't seen my lawyer yet. They haven't, uh, they hadn't offered me any time because I'm a two time felon. I got a first degree and a third degree felony charge. And both of them are because of meth, you know? So I was just waiting in jail for like, okay, when is my lawyer going to show up and tell me what I'm going to do? You know, how, how much time they're going to offer me, you know? Cause I, I had been in and out, in and out, in and out. And they're like, okay, you know, that's enough. You know, you're, you're, you're going to go to prison. Well, after I, you know, ended up giving my life to Christ or, or you rededicating my life, you know, my lawyer shows up and he was like, they're offering you eight years. We're not going to take it. And I'm like, OK, uh, the next weekend, Jackie shows up, you know, and she's like, oh, here's the kids. I got to see my kids. My lawyer shows back up and I end up getting six years, six years in prison, you know, for for both of those charges, which is great. You know, that's really good. So I already knew God was working, you know, because I had already had some back time from being in jail. So I ended up just doing two years in prison and while I was in there, I got really, really close with God. Like I was doing Bible studies. I was going to um, all kinds of, you know, church classes. I went to a, a a class that was called Inside Out Dad that was trying to teach me how to be a better, a better Christian father. You know, honestly, prison was the best thing and the worst thing that has ever happened to me. It, it's crazy because when when I was fixing a catch chain and, and catching chain is mean uh, means, you know, they're they're moving me to another prison. Well, when they moved me to another prison, you know, I was I was already praying to God, like God, man, just put me with some some men that that are trying to follow you too, you know. And it's it's crazy because that first night, and when they put me in the dorm, they called a uh, prayer. They called the prayer circle in that dorm my first night, and I'm like, man, God, I see you. I see you already making a way for me. That's awesome. Dude, that's that's powerful. Man. It, it is. That is powerful. So, throughout all of this, when would you say it was your last time doing drugs and being addicted? To be honest with you, when I got out of prison, uh, I relapsed a few times. You know, uh, I think I relapsed about two years ago, um, and. You know, I had started to drink a lot again and got drunk one night, real drunk, and ended up going to a guy's house that lived literally down the street from me because I knew he had drugs. And I relapsed. When I came to the next day, or not really came to, but kind of like... The day came. The day came. <coughs> and I was like, what the hell was I just doing? Like I could have thrown everything away that I had just, that I worked for, that I gained. I mean, I had everything in my life had changed from not having anything. My house that I used to live in didn't have electricity, didn't have water, didn't have gas. I would just sleep there, you know, and, and I would invite Jackie over and she would stay the night but have to leave because I didn't have any of those things when I got hungry. I went to my mom's to go eat or I would call Jackie. Hey, like, hey, can you bring me something to eat? Like I I had a home, but there was nothing in there but beds and couches, like no water, no gas, no electricity for me to gain all that I've gained and almost throw it away because I wanted to get high two years ago was one of the dumbest things I've ever done. Man, 
I really want to um go back to that and slow it down because you and your wife are model admirable people today. Like I just love what you guys do no matter who it is around you. You guys mm-hmm. stay consistent and love like Jesus does. Yes. I mean, you have no reason at all whatsoever to go back. And you went back. Walk me through that thought process where that night when it was only one beer, like what happened? How did he, what happened? We were just going to have a good time. You know, like I felt like in my mind that I've already come so long, so far that I was able to control myself, you know, to be able to socially drink. And, and be okay and, and still be a Christian and still go to church and still do those things. And it just, I went overboard. You know, after one, I felt good. After two, I felt even better. After three, I was like, well, I can, I can drink another one. After four, huh, I'm still good. Uh, man, I, I can handle this now. After five, man, this doesn't even phase me anymore. After six, I want to get high, <laughs> you know. So it it just it just spiraled down. I called into work the next day, and mm. I felt like, man, I couldn't even go and and face my job because I was coming down off of getting high, because I I I chose to do something stupid, and then I chose to call into work, and my job. They drug test and stuff like that. Like they, they could have drug tested me that next day and I could have failed and lost my job. You know, and, and that's, uh, I have a career now, you know, that's not something that you should go and throw away because you want to pleasure yourself with something that alters your mind and, and your thoughts and and your emotions, you know, because all that did was put me in a roller coaster for days you know, like, man, I, I almost lost everything because I could have, you know, I, I could have done something dumb. You know, I, I could have easily just gone out and, and drove around because I felt like, hey, I'm I'm good, but got put over and had alcohol in my breath and went to jail for DWI. You know, all these things could have happened. Was that the last time? Yes. How have you managed since then? Was it a simple decision? I went to go and talk to um, to Mike and Lisa. You know, I confided in Mike and Lisa, and I was like, you know, this is what happened, guys. You know, and, and I want to share this with you because I love you guys, and, and I trust y'all, and I know that y'all will really pray for me and that y'all really love me and care for me. And, and they did. You know, they, they didn't judge me off of, of one decision, one mistake, you know, like I was judging myself. Yeah. Because... When when you're in addiction and you're addicted to something, when you make a mistake, it eats at you. And you feel like the only way you can fix that mistake is just by keep doing the same mistake, which makes no sense at all. <laughs> no. You know what I mean? It makes no sense. So for somebody to be able to talk to you and love you, even though you made that mistake, is amazing. So, man, it's so important to whoever listens to this. To have you a great, great, great circle of people who love and care for you and want the best for you. Amen. Because without that, it's so easy to fall back. Were there any precautions you took to kind of avoid this? Like, did you stay away from anybody who had alcohol or drugs? Oh, yeah. Uh, When I first got out, I wouldn't. My mom used to get mad at me because I didn't want to stay over there. You know, oh, just just kick back and chill. And it's because they were they would drink a lot, you know, and b- me being fresh out, I didn't want to put myself in those type of surroundings. You know, so you always got to be careful with your surroundings, you know, because there's uh, what do you call them? When you see something and it, oh, like triggers, you know, oh, yeah. there's there's triggers, you know, and, and there triggers are real you know triggers are real one one of my triggers used to be music you know I, I would get in my car and then i would hear some of that old school music and i'm like i'm gangster again you know I'm, I'm leaning back in my seat you know i'm turning it up i'm like you know what what's up about to really pull the trigger yeah <laughs> well dude music's powerful man like straight up like, yeah like i'd be listening to rock and i'm just 
like screaming in my car and waving my hair around. I drive a but, little bit faster. Yeah, yeah, I drive a little bit faster. <laughs> and then like I'll be listening to some like I don't know, some sadder music and I'm just sitting there shedding tears. Man. Hey, um, so I wanted to ask you, do you think that God had his hand in all of it, like from the very beginning? Yes, I believe God was there because there was a situation that could have got me into real, real, real big trouble. The second time that I got busted, I pulled out a gun on somebody and I almost pulled the trigger and shot them. And the guy that was with me told me not to and let's go. Thinking about it now, that was probably God telling me not to do that. You know, so I believe he was there throughout the whole thing. I would just kind of fade him out of the picture, if you know what I mean. I was like, uh, I need you, but not right now. Kind of, you know, I'll I'll talk to you when I need you. That 911 God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I feel like he was there, you know, because he, he literally saved me. You know, because if I would have shot somebody, I probably maybe would have just gotten out recently or, you know, a few years ago, but I would have never met Jackie. I would have never had my kids. You know, things would have been so different. You know, so I, I know God ha- had his hand in the whole situation, you know, and I don't I wasn't the type of person that ever blamed God for for my decisions. I always knew it was me. I made that decision. I did what I did. You know, nobody forced me because I, I, I'm I, the way I see it. I'm a grown man. I make my own decisions. You know, I have my own thoughts. I did those things, you know, so I never blamed God. But at the same time, I didn't cry out to him like I should have, you know? What was that relationship like with God? Like, how did it feel? Uh, Y'all have heard of House of Faith, right? Yeah. I, I, grew up in, I, I grew up in House of Faith, you know, and I had always been a part of House of Faith. You know, I used to break dance at House of Faith when I was younger. So I, I always knew who God was, you know, I, and I always used to pray to him. I, I, used, I would read the Bible, you know, I, I would get locked up. And when I was locked up, I, I would, you know, I would read my Bible, I would pray, you know, I would come home, I would do all those things, but it never lasted, you know, and, and I don't, I don't think it lasted because I feel like in my heart, I was never really, truly seeking him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I felt like it was just out of obligation. I need to read the Bible. You know, not because I wanted to read the Bible. You know, I need to go to church. Not because I wanted to go to church. You know, I I need to pray at night. You know, not because I wanted to pray at night. You know, and that's one of the big things that I deal with now. I don't ever want to feel like I go to church out of obligation. I want to feel like I go to church because I love my church. Because I love to go to church. I love to hear the word of God. I love to feel the Holy Spirit. I love to be around people who who seek the same thing that I'm seeking. I don't ever want to feel obligated to seek my God. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want to. Yeah. Um, what was that relationship like with your wife and your kids? Uh, It was good and bad. You know, when it it got really, really good when I got out this last time because I was I was seeking the Lord you know and I was doing it wholeheartedly you know when when you seek the Lord with with your whole heart like really really wanting change for your life because you can't do it yourself it just changes everything people start to love you again people start to trust you like it it it's a total difference. You know, my, my kids didn't, they they don't even, you know, I'm glad that they were little enough to not remember me getting locked up, you know, but Jackie, Jackie remembers everything. Jackie remembers me, you know, abusing her, you know, spitting in her face, stomping on her feet, you know, like doing things that, man, I I would never do now. 
you know, and, and for her to, to love me now, knowing Jackie is the only person in my life that has seen the worst of me and also the best, Mm. you know? So for her to, to see it and to know that it's real is a blessing from God because I couldn't have been where I'm at today without her. Not everybody gets that lucky. I know. Being in recovery, being reconnected and sober today, um, when you look back on that that whole trial, the ups and the downs, I mean, where do you tie in like your relationship with God uh, when you look back at those footprints? Like, what what is it? That's an easy question. I feel like all that was not ordained by God, but God made a path for me that led me here, speaking with you guys, that led me at church, that led me at House of Faith. One of my favorite scriptures is from James chapter 1, verses 2, and it's consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And one of the reasons that this is my favorite scripture is because when I was in prison, it was the only thing that gave me hope because I knew God was just how they say, how it says in the Bible, when uh, they melt the gold or the silver, it's burning all the impurities out. And that's what God was doing, just refining me. Mm. You know, while I was in prison, he was just refining me, taking all the impurities out, you know, making me better. That's good. He he continues to refine us today. Oh, too. yes. Yeah. yeah. Putting yourself around that circle of people does that. Also, you know, uh, people who have kids have to realize their kids watch everything. Your kids see everything and they see if you're really real or not, you know, and, and they know, they know more than anybody else because they see it every day. They see if you're really praying. They see if you're really going to church. They see if you're really loving somebody the way you should. And that is, man, that is one of the, the things that, that I can really appreciate because yesterday we were at House of Faith. You know, because I, I volunteer at House of Faith now because uh, I, I like to talk to the the kids who are on probation and stuff, you know, about, you know, our, my testimony, pretty much what I'm doing right now. And my daughter, my 11-year-old daughter comes to me and asks me for prayer. You know, like, that's that means so much to me. That means that she believes that I know God. She believes that I can pray for her, you know. Like, dude, that's that's amazing for my daughter to come to me and be like, Dad, can you pray for me? You know, it could have been anybody else there. And she came to me and asked me for prayer. So House of Faith, I didn't know you were volunteering there. They they uh they're always in the need of volunteers. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I volunteer every Monday night. Uh my wife used to do that, but tax season has taken a hold of her. <laughs> By, yeah. by the throat. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. shout out to House of Faith, by the way. Yes. House of Faith is awesome. It is awesome. And if you live in San Angelo, go volunteer. It's yes. a great place to get connected to people who also love God and who are also pursuing that. What else you got going on in this beautiful sober life you have today? Well, I just bought a house. Awesome. And I couldn't. It's crazy. The house that I bought is friends of mine from church. And the way I bought it was just, it was God, it was God ordained because I, I didn't know it was their house. I went to church. Well, okay. So let me back up a little bit. Yeah, I, let's hear the story. It's good. It's yeah. a good story. Okay. I, so I did all this behind Jackie's back, right? I, I, I started, you know, seeing if I would be eligible, you know, for a, a house loan. Or however they do that, you know, and and I started, you know, putting my stuff online or whatever. So I started getting calls from people, and they're like, "Well, you're, you know, you're eligible for two hundred thousand dollars." And I was like, "What?" You know, because I 
never would have thought yeah that i'd have been able to do that you know so uh, i tell jackie and she's like okay well that's that's nice you know well uh, when I was talking to the lady, though, she asked me if I had a realtor. And I said, yeah. So I gave her the realtor's name. Well, the realtor was Jackie's friend. So she starts calling Jackie and was like, oh, so I'm so glad that y'all are ready to buy a house. So <laughs> they start sending Jackie all these house listings, right? And Jackie's like, I am not ready. We're not ready. We're not going to do it right now. You're going to have to, we're going to have to wait. We don't have, you know, the money. We only got so-and-so in savings or whatever. So she was flipping out, right? Flipping out. And I was just like, let's just go look. You know, let's just go uh, like window shopping. You know what I mean? Let's just go and and check some stuff out. So we go and start looking at some houses, right? And the first one, eh, it was nice. My kids really liked it. I was like, eh. I walk in, there's a big old water bug on the floor. I'm like, not this one. <laughs> <laughs> so we go look at a couple more. And then we go to the one I'm living at now, right? And and as soon as we walk in, I, I just felt, I was like, man, this feels like home. You know? And Jackie said, she was like, man, I just feel like the Holy Spirit here. You know, and and we talked about it that night. And we're like, man, maybe it's just you know, us seeing a nice house jitters. You know, and like, oh, we like this house. This is for us. You know, not knowing that it was really for us. So that was like, I think on a Friday, and we went to go look at it, and you know, we were like, man, you know, we really like it. You know, we, you know, we're talking to my wife, what do you think? And she's like, yeah, it's you know, I like it. I was like, okay. So I go to church Sunday, and I'm serving donuts. Kelly walks up to me, and he was like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, good, how you doing, brother? He's like, ah, you know, just trying to make it. I was like, yeah, me too, man, trying to buy a house. He was like, really? He was like, I'm trying to sell one. I was like, that's cool, man. He was like, what are you looking for? I'm like, four bedroom, two bath. I was like, but man, I think we found it, man. Uh, So he was like, well, if that doesn't work out, let me know. I'm like, okay. So I go home and I tell Jackie, right? I tell her, hey, you know, Kelly's selling the house too. We'll do what she was like. Well, let's go online and see what it is and see what it looks like. So she goes online and sees that it's their house, bro. Dude, it that is, is just crazy. Their house. Oh my gosh. So she was like, she starts crying, like automatic, just shedding tears, bro. And she's like, oh my God, maybe it is meant to be. And, and you know, and she was like, but we still don't have the money. Well, I pulled out money from my 401k and they were like, well, you're going to need like, I think they said six or 7,000. And we're like, man, we're not going to be able to make it. So she was like, well, let's just try. So she starts saving up money. Boom, boom, boom. Well, in all, when it all ended, you know, it was like way less than what we, we thought we were going to have to have. And we had way more than what we needed to have so it was like we were able to to get the house with leftovers and have christmas in the new house because it was right before christmas god is good yes he is amen amen wow so you guys got a new house (laughs) got a new house and the girls love it everybody has their own room just got a new dog I'm just really, really blessed. I feel like when you let God run your life, there's a scripture. I can't remember if it's Psalms 34, but it says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. I used to take that scripture the wrong way. I used to be like, all right, God, you know what I desire. Let me have it. (laughs) But if you desire God, God will give you what you like and what you love. I promise you. Mm. Mm. That's good. That's good. I think that we've pretty much got the testimony, man. Tony gone gang banger to gospel banger. Yes, sir. How about to the folks out here listening that might be wanting some answers on their own addictions? Yeah. Find somebody that loves God. When you open your heart to people who love God, they will open up not only their heart, but their home 
and they will help if y'all need help. They will pray if you need prayer. I mean, man, some of my best friends I've met through church because I shared my testimony, because I shared my walk, because I shared my struggles and my addictions with them. It's easy when you have help. It's easy when you have a circle. It's easy when you you hang with people who are seeking the same thing. But you have to seek God. You cannot do it without God. Cannot. It will not work. It will not. And I stand on that because I've tried. Trust me. Go look at my jail record. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that day came on when you just overcame it all and you're just with God now? Yes, I I think the day came when Jackie wanted to go to church. The first week I get out, I tell Jackie, we got to go to church. You know, that was my main goal when I first got out. My number one goal. I I, I had a list of everything that I needed, you know, all all these goals and, and things that I needed to hit. Right. So my first goal, I told Jackie, we need to find a church. And she said, okay, because Jackie was still in, in live addiction then. You know, I got out and she was still doing drugs, you know. So I end up finding a church, right? I, I go to the life church the first time. And because of my sister, my sister was going. Jackie didn't want to go. So she didn't go the first day, the first Sunday, you know. And I was, excuse me, I knew why, you know, she was coming down off of drugs I didn't want to go in front of people you know and, and was just like not ready well a few days later I think it was like on a Tuesday or Wednesday she gets a letter in the mail well it's not a letter it's a bill a water bill it was like 450 bucks you know and I had just gotten out so I hadn't even got a job yet you know she wasn't working and we had no means to pay that bill at all she told me why don't you call the church? Maybe they can uh, help you uh, find somebody who, who helps people, you know, pay bills and stuff. And I'm like, bro, I've only been there for one time. They don't even know me there. And you want me to call this church? You know, I'm tripping. Like, I, I didn't want to do it. You know, she was like, just call the church. They, maybe they'll, they know people who help. So when I call the church, I end up talking to this lady named Anna. And Anna, you know, asked me, you know, a few questions. So I, I share a little bit of my testimony, tell her, oh, well, I just got out of prison. You know, I'm trying to get my life straight. You know, I went to church Sunday and she was like, meet me at the water place. She met me at the water place the next day and paid my water bill. Wow. Jackie says, I'm going to church Sunday. Mind blown. So good. That's dude, so good. That's awesome, dude. It's Great testimony, man. I'm just so glad you uh, wanted to share it with us and with the world, man. I'm glad y'all let me share. It's positive reinforcement when you share because others could be going with, through what you're going through, you know, and they, you know, I could have said something that somebody needed to hear. Yeah, man. Well, dude, uh, we feel that we need to end it with prayer. And I was wondering if you would like to pray yeah. us out. Yes, I would. Father, I just want to give you thanks, Father, for just allowing me to meet these gentlemen, Father God, and be able to, to grow in you with them, Father, be able to come together in fellowship, Lord, and, you know, share share my testimony, Father God, and share all the wonderful things you, you helped me through, Father. And I know theirs, theirs aren't the same, but, and I know you've helped them through so much too, Lord. And I just give you thanks for all that you do, Father God, and ask that you just keep guiding us, Father. And keep leading us in the right direction, Lord. And allow us to be bold, Father God, bold in your word, Father, so that we may share with others, Lord, and that they may know that you are real, Father, and they can, that they will be able to see your love in us, Father. And I just love you, Lord, and I thank you for all that you do, Father. Man, just give you thanks, honor, and glory, and praise, because I wouldn't be here without you, Father. I wouldn't. And I just love you so much, Lord. It is your holy and precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hi, I'm Amen. Bailey. And I'm Trent.
Thank you so much for listening to this new episode. Yeah, hit the subscribe button. And like. And leave comments. And if you really liked it, share it with somebody. Tune in to this next episode. We got something special for you. I'm excited.